Welcome to the latest episode of Gloved. Um, very lucky to have a special guest. We've obviously got the brain trainer himself, Jamie Edwards, and um, good friend, someone who I respect very much in the game. We've got Casper Schmeichel, so thank you for coming, Casper. Thanks for having me. Um, obviously, we go way back, but we go even further back than Manchester City at the Gay Meadow, Shrewsbury Town. One and only. Versus Berry, faced off. <clears throat> my second loan move. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was actually my debut for Berry. I it remember it. I, it was, it was, it was fate, wasn't it? Really. It was. I, I remember standing in the tunnel. Gee, he's, he's, he's big. And then um, big goon. You came. You came tearing out. I think the second minute. Or so, <laughs> tearing out to the edge of your box and like never seen anyone punch a ball at probably that height. But he went head first into it, right at the edge, went out for a throw, like, wow, okay. So that was the first time yeah. you two. I remember it well. And then you said, I think I was, I think I was linked with yeah. Manchester City, but I didn't really understand how linked being worked. I was from a small town and I had the Shropshire Star and I didn't realise how heavily linked I was. Yeah. He went, I'll see you in the summer. And I was like, Cause yeah, because I knew Tim Flowers was in the crowd and obviously right. Tim was goalie coach at the time. So he was watching me, but he was obviously also scouting you. Yeah. So, um, two for so, one. Yeah. Two for one, exactly. I remember you, uh, I remember I saw you, I saw you afterwards in the tunnel. That was my first time, so don't hold me. <laughs> <laughs> With your England tracksuit on. That was my first call up under 19, straight after that, yeah. Peter Benetti picked me up. Was it? Well, Pete, Pete was my goalie coach at City before, before Tim. That's how random the combos are. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's a little world. It's a very little world, but it was, I remember it like it was yesterday. It was pitch, Jesus, it was. Yeah. Well, it wasn't even a pitch, was it? It was a meadow. Yeah. It was just a... Next to the river. One of, I think it was one of our players went down. It was it was a corner, yeah. and I'd got the ball, and one of our players went down, and I kicked out of play because he'd gone down. But I kicked out of play probably, you know, just out yeah. to the side, and I remember um, man in the car. Dave Flitcroft <laughs> yeah. turned turn around to me. He's like, "What the? Are you doing?" He's, He's injured. I mean, in the in the reserve league, you, that's what you did. So they're gonna throw it right back in at us. <laughs> and obviously, there was no fair play, so it came straight back in. Luckily, we didn't concede from it, but yeah, I got an absolute telly off for that. You're not getting called out. There's and I've there's never done that again. I've never done that again. So that was yeah. So those were the early days of you, and you know. So I mean, you're talking about a friendship that goes back many years. Yeah, yeah? you played against each other. Um, started off at a big club and had some interesting times in terms of your journey and and i think casper what's what's interesting is you you know what we're doing with with gloved and helping people and helping them understand you know what it takes to be not just a successful athlete footballer but but also how that has an impact outside of as well and so you know many loan moves um, oh yes, and I think one of the things that I always hear at the minute from a young player is, oh, "I've got to go out on loan. I've got to go out on loan." And you know, so what's your recollection of some of your early, early loan moves? I mean, I, I'd been I'd been at City obviously f f through the you know through the under 16s, under 17s, and, and all that, and um, you know we played a lot of games, came through with like Nader Manua, Micah Richards, you know, these type of players, you know, Michael Johnson, Stephen Island, you know, just to name a few. And so we had a really good generation, had a lot of success at youth level. Um, I was, I mean, I started at Man City. My first ever day at Man City was literally, it wasn't really anything. It was, uh, it was, it was a trial in a way, but I was, I was actually there with my dad and, uh, First thing, first person I met coming in the door was Kevin Keegan, manager at the time. And he said, right, you, with me. Went, okay. Oh, Straight, I, I was 15, 15. Um, and uh, he brought me in the gym and, right, beat me at head tennis. <laughs> and he absolutely wiped the floor with me. Um, yeah, and, and I, I kind of had a, I trained with, Peter Bonetti and, and some of the other keepers. I, I'd, I'd been, um, I'd actually been at, I started off at sports college, 
where I'd, I'd previously been in uh, in Portugal, lived two years in Portugal and played for a team called Estoril. Mm -hmm. And um, before that, football was it was on and off for me. It was it was interesting, then it wasn't interesting, and kind of got too much sometimes. And you know, the world of football and that was. You know, that was before social media and all that kind of stuff. But it was, you know, it was mayhem. It was madness all the time. Man United uh, and, and all that kind of thing. So um, so football was kind of an on and off interest for me. But it was really in Portugal. I got back into it, came into a team. We won the National League title. And, uh, you know, that kind of whet my appetite again for football. I went to sports college back in Denmark, which which, which was a, a, you know, it was a, re it was a school that, one of some of my friends were going to. It was a boarding school, and I, I, you know, I begged my parents to let me go. And I was I was only 14 at the time, and they weren't sure about me moving. It was, you know, they my dad had signed for man for Aston Villa at the time, sorry, and uh, it was well then my mum would have to move back to Denmark, and we'd have to split the time and all. But they 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 gave in and they they let me go, and it was a great year for me because it it was basically football from you woke up in the morning till. You went to bed at night. And always in goal. Were you always in goal? Uh, well, I had that was a time I had to choose a position because you weren't allowed to come into the school without a without a designated position. So I'd played loads of places. I'd played everywhere basically, but I was mostly a striker. Um, right. Obviously. Yeah. Obviously. Standard. Standard. <laughs> exactly. Easiest position on the pitch. But I no. thought I'd test myself and become a goalkeeper. You know. But it, you know, it just came most natural to me. It was kind of a decision of right, if if I want to make something of football, what you know, what has the most potential for me? What position would let me get the furthest? And so you actually went through that process. Yeah, you know, it, yeah, it just it just felt the most natural position to go into if I wanted to make a career out of football, um, and. I had a great year down there uh, and learned so much about football. I mean, at, at that time, I, I, I couldn't strike a ball properly. I couldn't even take my own goal kicks. I had the, the left back and the right back taking goal kicks. But I had a coach, again, probably the first coach that really inspired me, that really kind of also got me. I mean, you know, I was young and had a little bit of a temper, but still got a temper. <laughs> You're a lunatic. No, 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 no. Anyway. He he got he got it. He was the first one who kind of got it and tried to curb it to to good use. Because right. obviously, I, yeah, I, I had lots of enthusiasm and enthusiasm can boil over to to anger, frustration, to all these kind of different things. And it was a matter of of channeling it properly. And he was he recognised that I wanted to win and I wanted to get better. So he spent a lot of time with me, working, practicing, training, all these kind of things. Most of it was outfield work because my feet were. You know, were terrible at the time, right. and that was great for me because I could literally train six, seven hours a day, and right. and I would do the same drill over and over again. It would literally just be clipping a ball, clipping a ball. I'd do that for three, four hours, just 15 yards, 15 yards, 30 yards, 30 yards. Just keep doing it over and over and over and over again right. until it was just second nature. And and because I had that much time on my hands, you know, I didn't always make it to class be generous but uh no it, it just gave me time to develop like basic skills that I hadn't had from when I was a kid okay. uh so I had that year there and I uh I started so you can only you could at that time you can do six years there now but now back back then it was only one year so, so obviously you had this coach but let's yeah. not ignore you also had one of the greatest goalkeepers in the world as your father. What was, what, what, where was he at? At this point? Well, he, he was, um, <laughs> yeah, but he, he was playing at Villa at the time. And I, so in the, in the holidays, I'd go to England. We'd all go to England and, and see my dad and I'd go to training with him and I'd train, I'd train with Eric Steele, yeah. um, the, the, uh, the guru, as he calls himself. <laughs> um, but yeah, I'd train with him. Uh, I'd train with, uh, with Boaz Myhill, uh, Peter Enkelman, uh, my dad never really joined in goalkeeper training. He he was always with the outfielders, but I trained with all them, uh, which was great experience for me. And um, and you were fourteen at this time. I'm fourteen at this time, yeah. And I remember we Christmas so we have Christmas Day on Christmas Eve, um, like you know everyone else does. But um, <laughs> <laughs> no. now he's really showing that he's not English. Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Definitely not English. <laughs> no, we. So I remember we we trained. I trained in the morning, and I think the, I can't remember. But my dad had a tendency to go in early from training, uh, get a massage. He was thirty eight at the time, or something like that. So you know, he'd he'd look after his body in that sense. And they, Peter Enkelman wasn't training, and and it was only Boas and me. So I was thrown in with the first team, but I, I I'd been so ill all day. I'd, I'd been. I'd felt horrend, just so so bad. I'd, my stomach was in was in turmoil. But I've had this chance of going training at a Premier League club. I was training with David Ginola, with you know so Juan Pablo Angel. These 14, 15. 14 here, yeah. You know, and I, so I didn't care how bad I felt. Yeah. You know, literally, Mum, can I can I have a paracetamol or something? Yeah, they get get a paracetamol down and then took me to the dock before training and said, ah, it's probably just some indigestion or something, you'll be all right, blah, blah, blah. So I went out and trained, got to this little game, little small-sided game, and I had Premier League strikers game. I came out for one, spread, and it hit me clean in the stomach. And the pain, I remember, was so big, and I was literally about to throw up, but I didn't want to show it. I did not want to show it. So I kept going, kept going, and after training, I came in and I was sat. Right, just like that. And my dad comes. You're right. What's, what's what's going on? And so he just left. He just left. To yeah, he he, he went he went to he went to do uh, do his gym stuff and his uh, you know whatever he needed to be done. They had a game uh, on Boxing Day, so yeah. so yeah. Um, so I was like, right, let's get get you home. We got home. I said, right, go have a nap. We we in the evening celebrate Christmas and go have a go have a nap and then you know we'll do the dinner and you come down. I remember coming down. I felt horrific. So I was like, and I looked terrible, he said. So my, my grandmother, my dad's mother is a nurse. And uh, so he rang, right, listen, Casper's got sore stomach. Any suggestions? He goes, just try and prod him on, the, uh, on, the, on his left-hand side of his stomach. So when I goes over and just go, like, whack into it. And I just flew out this couch and said, was that him? I said, yeah, yeah, that was him. Said, right, he's got appendicitis, right. So literally, I I was at six o'clock, and at eight o'clock I was rushed into into hospital with a with a nearly burst appendix and and having to be operated on straight away. So yeah, <laughs> so it was a, it was mad, but again, I was never going to let that opportunity of training with a Premier League team pass me by. So at that point, you hadn't really decided on no. that you were going to be a goalkeeper. It was it was? But you de- can let's can we. Because Joe's mentioned, yeah. obviously, you've got the most one of the most famous fathers as a as a as a goalkeeper, yeah. right? So up to that point, he's playing where? He's playing at Aston Villa at this point, at, yeah. my, at age fourteen, right? He'd just come from Sporting Lisbon, mm-hmm. where they'd won the league, uh, and obviously I'd played in a in a local team there, and then he he went to Aston Villa yeah. at this time, and. Um, Eric Steele had made the recommendation to sign me there. Mm-hmm. There was a change of manager uh, and a change of coaching staff, so things kind of changed. I think my dad's situation changed, my, yeah, so we ended up not signing there. Uh, I came back after about, I think, four weeks and played after my my appendix operation, which was foolish looking back at it. But again, loved football. Yeah, yeah, loved football. Just wanted to play, so so I played and all that. But School then finished. I was obviously going. This was just in the holidays, so I kept coming back to school, going there, training with, with the Premier League team and and all that. And then school finished, and I had a decision to make. Um, I didn't really know what to do. I had no idea because I was just turned 15, and my dad had signed for Man City, and we were going to keep the same arrangement of of us living in Denmark and him playing his last year there. And um, was that because at the end of obviously your dad's career, the intention was all of you to move back to Denmark? Yeah, that was the intention. Yeah, that was the intention. So obviously because he was coming towards the end and you guys were at certain points in your life, it was to get settled and to live your life over there. Basically, yeah, basically. Um, And I played, well, so again, Game of coincidences. I uh, every every year. So the Danish national team in 1992 won the Euros, and they had this 
big party every year to celebrate it, obviously, because it was Denmark winning the Euros. It's ridiculous. Well, on the day of the final. Yeah, so every year they'd get together, the whole team, and they'd play a game, a charity game, somewhere around the country in Denmark, and then they'd have a big party in the evening uh, to commemorate this. And uh, I'd been to, obviously, all, to all the, the, the functions and all the do's and all that uh, through the times, but the, the keeper that was on the bench for my dad in that game was still active, so he, couldn't, he was on pre-season. And there was this tradition of my dad being subbed off to go up front and him playing the second half. So um, that tradition needed to keep going and I didn't have a keeper. So Rickard Miller Nilsson, the manager, he said, well, what about your son? I was like, yeah, yes, yeah, yeah, I'll do it. So I went on and I had a pretty good game. It was, it was mad. And the defender in front of me, so the captain of the team back then, Lars Olsen, he was, uh, he'd just become a youth team manager of Bronby back in Denmark. Um, so I played the game, played the half, sorry, and, uh, and did well. And at the sort of function in the evening, Lars kind of came up to me and said, well, what, what's your plans? What, what are you going to do? And I you know, wrote my dad in and said, what's, uh, what's going on? What, and said, do you fancy coming on, on trial with us? Yeah, brilliant. So uh, I, had a, I had about a month there. So I remember my first day, I had to get, I think, yeah, three buses to get there. So it took three buses to get there. I was, you know, from your home in Copenhagen. yeah, from our, our home in Copenhagen, because Bromby was a bit out of the way from where we lived. Yeah. But um, yeah, but I, was, I remember being petrified, like being. Oh, so how did you feel God. about trials? I, I was fine about trials because I, I kind of done it with, you know, with a Premier League team, so I was kind of fine with that. But it was just, you know, your first day, you don't know anybody, mm. and then uh, I go in the dressing room and everyone's great, and then. This geezer balls in in, uh, in alligator skin shoes and leather jacket. It was Daniel Agger. You know, what a, what, what a guy, like what a guy. So, and he, he was with us for literally a week and then he got dragged straight up into the, he, he was that good, you know. So I, I went there and um, I trained, I trained with the, the key, a guy called David Osted, who is now, uh, I think, Vancouver Whitecaps he's playing. Um, I remember him being good. Like really good. I'm thinking, Jesus Christ, he's good. Like I'm, I've was got. Was he youth team with you, or was he first team? Well, no, he was youth team. He, he was same age as me. So uh, I remember thinking, God, I've got no chance here. And um, it was no, it wasn't. It was still not serious to me in a way. It was mad because it wasn't really serious. Because I didn't know what I was gonna do. And and football to me was it was so natural to me. That, and I'd been to Bromby so many times through my life, through my, you know, through my family, and and basically I was just training. I, I, you know, they gave me a bus pass. That was it, you know. And and we got to this big international tournament that uh, we we got away, and I got a call. I played the first game against Finland. It was mad. We played teams against countries. It was weird, weird tournament. But we uh, we played that game, and uh, I got a call from my dad's agent at the time, saying, do you, uh, do you fancy coming on trial at Man City? I was like, why is he, why is he asking me? Why, yeah. Why is, yeah, I spoke, speaking to Kevin Keane about it, he wants you to come on trial. Obviously, he'd seen me, you know, in, when I'd been over on holiday and that, and then I came over on trial, and he put me straight in with uh, Peter Benetti and the other first team keepers on my first day at 15. That's heavy. Yeah, that was heavy. Uh, I mean, it was to the point I didn't. I had a, I had a, one pair of gloves that that I nicked off my dad. Yeah. You know, they're about seven sizes too big for me. I didn't even know what studs and molds were. I had a pair of boots on that I bought in Nike Town or wherever. I didn't. Yeah. I mean, I didn't know what I've. I just turned up here. I had big baggy shorts and I looked probably an idiot. But so I had. So I went there. My first ever day. Keegan goes to me, like they're doing the the, the training and all that. He calls me over. Right. Tell Nashi, get over here. So I swapped with Carlo Nash, straight in with the first team. I remember Ile Berkovic stopped the game and just went, whoa, 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 whoa. Stop, stop, stop. And pardon my language. Who the f is that? Gaffer, what's, what's going on here? Are you having us on here? He's like, just get on with it, just get on with it. I was like, oh. Wow. <laughs> what an introduction. Yeah, so I, I played the little game. I did okay. 
I did okay. And then he put me into a finishing session. And I had uh, Sean Wright Phillips and I had, um, I had Nicholas and Elka finishing against me. And they absolutely just dismantled me, like took me apart on the first day. That's day one. That was day one. So that was kind of a baptism of fire of, of, of what was kind of to come. And he, he kept me there for, for two weeks up with, with the first team. Uh, and then at the end, they, I was due to go back because I had to start school. I was still only 15, so I had to, I had to do one more year of school. And uh, they said, well, right, we'll offer you a contract. So I, um, yeah, I, I basically just took whatever they offered. But they offered me a five-year contract with a year as a scholar in school. Sorry, as a, as a schoolboy, uh, three-year scholar and a two-year pro. Um, so yeah, brilliant, signed it. So went went into Main Road and Bernard Holford, God rest his soul, um, sat there. I, I still remember, still got the pictures of it. Signing first contract with uh, with him, and um, and that was that. I had to start school. So after school, uh, I used to get a taxi to training. There's no buses, no trains or anything that could go. So we the, the club organised taxis and train in the evenings. And then again, in all school holidays, I'd be up with the first team. Um, and then that continued for a while uh, through the various youth ranks. I, I went, I started in the under 16s, mm -hmm. played one game and they took me to the 17s. And then the year after they wanted to keep me in the 17s. We had, because we, um, we had Kieran Westwood and uh, Wayne Hennessy. Uh, Wow, some yeah. so it, it was some, us, some uh, squad there, yeah, isn't it? Keepers in the in the uh, in the academy. So um, so yeah, I I, I kind of went quite th quickly through those ranks, and um, I remember one one day after school, uh, the taxi not being there, but my dad picking me up, which was weird because I was obviously going to training. And he said, "No, you're not. You you're coming with me. We're going to Carrington." I said, "For what? Were you going with the reserves?" It's like wow, like Jesus. Yeah, you're not playing, but you 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 you're with the reserves to to Newcastle. So for a game. yeah, for a game. So um, that was my first game with. I was I was 15. I was on the bench for Kevin Stewart Ellegaard, who um, another a Danish keeper who was at Man City at the time. Right. Um, so yeah, I went away with the with with the reserves and you know amazing experience trying that and then kept kept playing, kept playing, kept playing and had some some you know some great coaches in the academy. I had, Jim Cassell, who was the academy manager, looked after me really well. Alex Gibson, uh, Frank Bunn, Paul Power, you know, all these kind of guys who, who had a great kind of blend of being old school, but modern thinking, you know, the uh, great blend of, of, of putting an arm around you, but also you know, being a tough love as well. You've got to understand this is a man's game. This is, this is tough. Um, so I've got a really good kind of education of what was what was to come from them. So interesting, don't you think that he's saying football, he wasn't quite sure. And then if we can go to well, the, the relationship, let's say with your dad, yeah. okay? So was dad always just dad or well, that did- was, that, was conversation. that was a conversation when, before I signed the contract, basically he asked me, what do you want me to be? Yeah, because yeah. you're not stupid. You're going to, no matter, you know how fickle the world is and everyone's going to see you walk through the door. Be with the I, did, I didn't think that at the time. Really? I, you didn't? didn't? Because, that, I, that's good though, but because I didn't that's... think like that. I just loved football. Yeah. I didn't think any of that stuff at all. I'd always had it. Like anywhere I'd ever been, people would still recognise me from when I was like, from when I remember. People recognised because I was the only blonde kid there. And, yeah. Oh, they put two and two together. Blonde kid in Manchester. Oh, he doesn't speak it. He speaks... It, you know, English with an accent to start off with, and then got to be his son. Yeah, exactly. So, um, so I never really thought about it, and I still never. I mean, I I still don't get the the intrigue. I mean, f I, I I understand it more, but surely it's not that interesting anymore. Yeah. But yeah. I know, I know, yeah, but yeah, yeah. but um, Casper, really. <laughs> but we had we had the conversation where he asked me, and I said, she said, do you want me to be? Your coach, or do you want me to be your dad? And I said he didn't. You know, he didn't want to sway me to. He just asked the question, waited for me to answer. And I said, I want you to be my dad. And well, he said, and he said, and he said, I am so glad you said that, yeah. because the last thing he wanted to do was be my coach. So we've we've always had a very 
uh, like professionally separated relationship. We've been we're much closer as people than we are football wise. I mean, as the years have gone on, yeah, you two are like friends. Yeah, yeah, I suppose very much so. But, but the that, thing yeah. is, we can relate to each other so well because of we have he has encountered all the things that I have encountered, all the feelings, all the emotions, all the. Mm. The, 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 you know, the elation, the joy, the frustrations, the anger, all the things that I am going through in my career, mm -hmm. there's a reference point to that. Mm -hmm. So he, he understands me, he gets me, he knows when not to call, when to call, yeah. when not to bother me with stuff or when to approach with stuff and things like that. So in that sense, it's been a, it's been a great help to have someone who understands what I'm going through and it not being, you know, some, you know, where you don't, where, where, you know, the, the family don't don't know what's, you know, what's actually required, and I think that was going back to the the start of it, where we're talking about it not being serious. Football was going to happen for me in my head, mm. whether my dad was who he was or not. Football was what I was destined to do in my head, and I didn't realise how hard it was going to be, mm. but I knew it was going to happen. So at that point, when you said that you didn't realise how hard it was going to be, did you ever, excuse me, did you ever ask him, <laughs> did you ever ask him as a coach or was it, no. was it, was I, it dad? It was always dad. I, I was well, so... He's been lucky. there, he's been up the mountain. He's always been there, but I have always been so lucky. That I, so my, the first goalkeeper, obviously he was the first goalkeeper when I came to City, but my first goalkeeper that I really worked with was David Seaman. Yeah. You know? So I had not just my dad to look at, I had Dave Seaman to look at, you know? And I had Nicky Weaver to look at. You know, I had Carlo Nash. I had lots of good goalkeepers there at the did, time. Did you still speak to your coach from your school in Denmark? Was he like yeah, was still, he someone yeah, that still you, speak to him. you wanted to cut no, but I mean at this time, this time when no, you're this, at this you've time, moved not, away not from that, that much. I, I sometimes saw him when I went back to Denmark, yeah. but it wasn't wasn't like that because I then had Tim Flowers. Yeah. So Tim was, when I came to City, Tim was on loan from, uh, I, th I think from Leicester. He was on loan to Man City. What do you uh, mean? Yeah, Tim was a player at Man City first. I didn't know that. So when I, when I came to, to City, Peter Benetti was coaching me and Tim Flowers. Right. And Carlo Nash and Nicky Weaver. So Tim was still active. I, I managed to play with Tim as still active. So Tim was the coach. Or, and... Um, he came the year after David, when David Seaman retired, Tim became coach. So we had Peter Benetti, World Cup winner, and Dave Seaman, winner of everything. Mm. Now, that was, that was more my two first reference points. Then I had Tim, and uh, we had David James coming. And um, <laughs> You know why I'm laughing? All right? Because when you talk about having access yeah. to, to people, and... You could say, oh, he's name dropping, but actually, we know you're not, but what people don't understand is that there's a lot of guys who wouldn't utilize, take advantage of that. And I'm looking at you like, he's like, I had this guy, I had this guy. And a, they, 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 were all, they were all idols to me. Mm. Like these were all idols and I'm getting to train with these guys. I'm getting to Did look you speak to them? All the time, I must have <laughs> pestered them. But like yeah. David Seaman, obviously, they, where they, they looked after me because probably of who my dad was. They, they looked after me and they accommodated my kind of eagerness to learn. Yeah. I wanted to, to no, kind of... No, 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 I've, no, I've got like, to disagree with you there. No, if, no, no, because for, for like, Dave Seaman picked me up to go to training because I lived in the same village as him. Would he have done that for anyone else? I don't know. He's, he's a nice guy. He might have done it. I don't know, yeah. but... You know, it's right. Like, don't get me wrong. I think Cass would be the same. We'd all have a, a 15, 16 year old at our club who everyone's like, this guy is good. And you'd think, yeah, he's good. And you'd listen to him. Yeah. But if you lived in the same village as me, would I take him to training? No, probably not. No, it's just if, if, if Joe's son all of a sudden one day played yeah. with me, of course I'd, yeah. okay. I'd look after That's him. That's what he means. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I get my, da my dad and David Seaman were, you know, old rivals, but friends in a way, you know, they had mm. a long history together. So of course he, he looked after me, and the same with Tim, you know. But so you, you, you're asking me about if I referenced my dad. Of course, I referenced him on some things, and I, you know, I, I had videos, old cassettes, uh, VHS. Uh, videos. We're old, yeah. aren't we? We are old, man. <sighs> I was gonna say, but are you I must age? have watched it. <laughs> I must have watched the videos five hundred times, if not more. 
and studied every single move he ever studied. made. Love every that. single move he ever made, I studied. Studied. But I did exactly the same with David Seaman. I did exactly the same with David James. I did exactly the same with him. I did exactly the same with Shay Given. All the ones I were, and I still to yeah, this you're, day you're big on your do exactly the same. And yeah. video analysis has been one of the biggest tools I, I use. YouTube was a godsend. Yeah. Because for me, I had a dad who was a certain size, a certain style in a certain era. Mm. I can't play the way he played. He was his own style. No one could play the way he played. Exactly. So for me, I'd seen these things and I was trying these things, but mm. I couldn't pull them off because I didn't have... One, I didn't have the tactical knowledge, the, you know, the, the, probably the speed at the time, the strength mm. that he had at the time. And I was doing things because I'd seen him do it. But I, need, I also understood I needed to develop my own game. So Your own identity. Yeah. Well, yeah. No, no, not my own identity. I didn't really... The identity thing, didn't, that's never really bothered me. But um, you, had a, you had a different shape and size to your, exactly. to so to I your started English goalkeeper. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So when I was at this sports college, our, our, our coach was obsessed with Real Madrid. Like... We had to play like Real Madrid. Yeah. So we actually, we took a bus from Denmark to Madrid, sleeping on the bus. Yeah, we took a bus all the way there to play against Real Madrid youth team. And we played against them, lost 4-0, and, and, but I had a great game. It was, it, was, it was shown on Real Madrid TV and all that kind of, it was mad. Who was their first team keeper at the time? Ike Casillas. Yeah. And we went to training and we watched him, watched Zidane and all them boys there. Oh, really? And I watched Casillas, I was just stood looking at this guy who's not much older than me. Yeah, he wasn't, was he? Wasn't much older. And I'd had, and, and the thing is, I'd actually had a previous encounter of, with Casillas. Not that he'd have known it, but I actually had a previous encounter with him. We had a, a mad, mad situation when we lived in Portugal where there was a big forest fire and um, our house was in grave danger of being caught up in this. But my dad was playing Real Madrid that evening at, in, in Lisbon. So... Um, this was, mobile phones had just come out at this time. We had the big brick. So basically, he, he should have been in the hotel, but we were packing all our belongings into the, all the cars, getting every, anything that was valuable to us, pictures, everything, pack it into the car, and then this fire comes, we're out of here. And uh, the, the, the deal was, I would sit behind the goal, my dad's goal, and if this brick rang, I would run over to, to the... Um, I'd run over to the uh, to the coach and tell him, and he'd have to take my dad off. So is this a Champions League game? Yes. So it the, the tunnel, <laughs> the tunnel at Sporting Lisbon was behind one of the goals, and Casillas got sent off in this game. So I'd be, I was watching, but he'd got sent off in this game, and he had to walk right directly past me. Yeah. So I'd I'd already seen this guy really close up. I'd watched him in the game, and I'd I'd, I'd seen him like walk past me. So he was straight away someone that I looked to, yeah. and um, and that was you know that was then seeing him there, seeing what he went on to do. He just when we went down there, that was the year he won his first Le Champions League, age there. seventeen yeah. or eighteen, however old he was. Riding his bike to training. And stuff. Yeah, you know. So obviously I watched him, but I watched every keeper, and I still do. And YouTube was massive because there was not lots of tools like there are now to scout players to watch players but I used to watch a lot who do you watch today? everyone I mean I watch everyone I love watching and nope. trying to learn and seeing if there's something that I can use I can try something different you know that maybe I could use I try it in training yeah that works or no that doesn't work but particularly through those young years I couldn't have had better people around me to learn from you know, I had three England keepers, for Christ's sake, you know? Mm. I, I had, and, and then, obviously, you came along after, and we, we kind of had the same passion for it. And, I, and we had a coach, and that was where Tim was so good, I think, for both of us, yeah. in the sense that he, he loved the fact that we loved it. And he'd take us out in the afternoons and do sessions, and it'd just be us three. And he, um, he asked too, a lot of the time. Yeah, but yeah, that, obviously, me and you went out and did, <laughs> did like, sessions just on our own. But, yeah. but we having all these people to learn from having them to watch and Tim was was you know really really kind of engaged with me before you came um, you know taking me early early in the mornings to go out you know so if training started 10 30 you know quarter to nine we'd be out and I'd be working from quarter to nine till probably quarter to one 
training, 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 training. Any kind, any sets, any reps I could get, I would get because obviously when the first team keepers came out, it it was to get them ready for the game, and and I'd accept obviously find that you know I'd I'd have, you know, I'd have to fetch David James coffee and yeah. during training and things like that and. You know, go get the water, go get the balls, all these kind of things. And whenever you got a chance, you jumped in and you know you, you took whatever you could get, um, and and that was great. It looks like he would still do that today. Yeah. To a, Maybe yeah. not go get. Coffee, <laughs> <but>. <laughs> no, but yeah, no, 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 you would. To, we, to we, same point, I, mean, I, I, I can see the, I can see the Alan as well. Mm -hmm. Body alert. I mean, yeah. if I could, yeah, okay. I, I, I'd, I'd yeah. train all day if, if I could, because it, I love doing it. It's, it's brilliant. Mm.